Alright guys, before I jump into this tutorial, I wanted to do something a little bit fun real quick. Um, I think I have two spins. Uh, hopefully this will load. Yeah, I have two spins, so why not start off this video with two spins on the roulette. Let's, uh, let's see what we get. It's, or what I get. <laughs> Whoa! A hundred... nice. That pretty much paid for itself. And then let's see what we get on the second one. Um... 25. So, uh... Yeah, I got those spins from the daily quest, as you'll see right there. So I just pretty much got 125 gems for free. Or, or not gems, crystals. But anyways, on to the tutorial. This is a beginner's tutorial to try to help out some of you guys. How's it going, guys? I'm going to be making a beginner's tutorial, or kind of a beginner's tips video on Magecraft, because it's a relatively new game, and I have not seen one out there. Decided I'd make one, why not? And uh, just let me go ahead and say... I've actually never recorded a video like this with my phone, so if I sound kind of quiet, it's my fault. I'm trying to talk as uh, closely to my mic as I can, which actually makes it awkward to play the game with the phone like two inches from my mouth. But uh, anyways, I'll try to speak clearly so you can hear me, and uh, yeah, we'll get into this. So one of the first things I wanted to mention, um, because if you're watching this, you're probably new to this game, which by the way, if uh, you've been playing this game for a decent amount of time, you probably know everything I'm going to mention in this video. This is pretty much just for beginners. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and get that out of the way. I'll show you my rank real quick. Um, let me switch over to, or not growth, I meant to click total influence. So uh, you can see my rank real quick. I am 30, so to be 30 in the world, you have to know something about the game. And uh, like I said, I apologize if I start to sound quiet. Never really made a video like this on my phone. So uh, let me open up my notes. I have that on my uh, iPod Touch over here. Well, the first things I wanted to mention is, see how on the top left my um, food is red? It's because I'm not producing enough food per an hour, and that's because I did not build enough farms. And when you first start the game, you're going to want to build two quarries. You're going to want to build two of every resource because that's just natural instinct to, you know, make each resource buildings along the outside, these things out here, to build them evenly. You actually want to build all farms and barracks and then one of everything else. That's a mistake I didn't, that I made, and I'm going to have to go through and I'm going to have to deconstruct all these buildings and replace them with farms, which is going to be a huge setback. Because uh, see my upkeep from troops. So just keep this in mind. When you're building your things around the outside of your castle. Like your quarries, your barracks and all those. You want to build majority farms and barracks. And then make only build one of everything else. You need a lot of farms. Or you're going to be negative like I am right here. And you're actually going to be losing food every hour. Which is really going to get annoying. Because then you're going to have to deconstruct your lumber mills and stuff. And uh, turn them into farms. So that's the first thing I wanted to mention. And uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, quest rewards. This is something that used to frustrate me, call me an idiot, but uh, you have quests up here and uh, you get rewards. Sometimes when you complete a quest, it will say your reward is 5,000 food or 5,000 lumber. And I used to get so frustrated. I'd complete a quest and I wouldn't get anything. And I didn't realize that you actually had to go to your inventory. You click the chest at the bottom, go to inventory, go to resources, and when you get something like 5,000 food, you actually have to go to your inventory and apply it. I thought it put it straight into your resources at the top, and uh, that used to frustrate me because I'd complete a quest and I'd be like, why didn't I get these resources? So uh, that's another tip. And then another question I see a lot in global chat is how do I move my base? Now let me see if I can find it. See this little thing right here? I'm going to zoom in on it for you. This is how you move your base. Find one of these on the map, click on it, click move, and uh, it costs the resettlement item, which is really expensive. So be really careful where you move, make sure you like it. You get one free, and then after that you have to pay for it, and they're really expensive, like I said. But uh, if you want to move, you click on these little holes in the ground. I see that question all the time in chat, so uh, I felt like I should go ahead and cover that in this tutorial. Let me check my notes. Um, uh, let's see, how to move... Oh, another thing I guess I should mention, or that I wanted to mention, let me go back into my base, is that uh, every time you upgrade your buildings for your troops, like your Dungeons of Souls, or like this, this is for Golems. Every time you upgrade it, see how the costs go up? Oh, sorry if I'm sounding quiet. The cost goes up every time you upgrade a building, so try to 
to train a lot of troops um, while your buildings are at low levels or if you're having problems with resources, like your troops are costing so much that you can't keep recruiting them, then uh, try not to upgrade these because obviously every time you upgrade them, they go up by significantly uh, noticeable amount of resources. Like that's a hundred more of everything, which when you train your units and units in bulk, can uh, make a huge difference so that's something i wanted to mention every time you upgrade your troops they do cost more to make they don't take longer to train but uh, they cost more so if you're having resource problems there's something for you right there and uh let's see what's something else i wanted to mention oh this is something i don't know i've seen a couple people ask about it like they're so worried about when they're um beginner um protection pack or whatever whenever you first start playing you have like a three-day shield no one can attack you and that people like freak out whenever that ends uh if you right over here is my keep if you go to your keep and there's this secure you can secure your troops in your keep and uh, as long as troops are in your keep if someone attacks you your troops won't die but if you have all your troops in your keep and someone attacks you they're pretty much just going to take your resources with no fight but you don't have to worry about your troops dying. And if you're really low level, I'd especially recommend that for you. That way, so when some big guy tries to bully you, they don't kill all your troops like it's nothing. And then uh, you pretty much just quit the game because you don't have troops. Uh, just give up your resources at the early levels. It's not too hard to get back. And uh, make sure you always, always crypt right there. Always crypt your troops before you go to bed. Just always do it. It's really smart. And uh, you'll thank me for that. You just want to always do it. And uh, another thing that I recently had questions with that we figured out is can you group attack? Like if, uh, let me go up to the world map. I can like reinforce this person with troops. I click reinforce, I can send them troops. And uh, it was something I was just wondering, if someone else sent me troops, can I attack with his troops and my troops? And the question is yes, but you can only attack wonders. See how right here, when you uh, click on the wonder, it says capture? If uh, I click capture, I don't actually want to attack that, I can attack with my troops and someone else's. But um, wherever you see that capture button, you can use other people's troops. When I try to attack this person, there's no capture option. So pretty much you can attack other people. You cannot attack other castles with someone else's troops that are reinforced in your castle. You can only attack other people with your troops. That's something to keep in mind when you're playing defense. So there's no way like an entire alliance could all attack your castle from one attack. They could uh, all separately, but you, I hopefully you kind of understand what I was saying there. Um, I don't know. That was just something I was wondering about. And uh, I think there's one more thing I wanted to mention. Oh, yeah, this is one last thing that I wanted to cover since this is beginner's tutorial and I see it in chat a lot. These wild marches, when you first ca when you capture them, your troops actually sit in them. It's not like the, um, the asylums don't come back. And uh, I see a lot of people asking, like, where do my troops go? And uh, when you capture these, let me go to here, go in my base and try to go to one that I actually own. We'll go to this one right here. Um, I believe this should take us to it. So, uh, see how I own it? You actually have to click on it. Um, I don't have any troops in it, but you would have, you have to recall your troops out of it. I see all the time people are like, oh, I, I don't know where my troops went. And then like five minutes later, someone points out to them that they're probably in one of these places, like a hunting ground that they took. And they don't realize that you actually have to recall your troops out of them. They're not like asylums where the troops come back. Now that's really basic, but... I thought I might as well just cover that in this tutorial. And uh, I think that was pretty much everything I went over, or I wanted to go over in this. Uh, pretty basic, just uh, your standard stuff. I'll probably do a more advanced one later. And um, hopefully you guys learned something. Like I said, this is just for people that are really new to the game. And just a couple things that I wanted to throw out there. So hopefully you enjoyed, and let me uh, know if you learned anything.